In today's day and age of multicolor 3D printers, some of you might feel left behind if you've got a guy like that, the Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus. Today's video, we're not going to be going over how I designed this multicolor light box, but more so if you already have a print in your slicer that you want to send off to your printer, but you also want it in multicolor. Now, machines like the Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus behind me or Creality's Ender 3 don't come out of the box ready to do multicolor printing, and any accessory you might purchase to add multicolor capabilities to that machine can often exceed the cost of the machine itself. But there's still a way you can achieve multicolor prints if you've got a little time to babysit the printer. We're going to be using this design that I whipped up in Fusion. Now, this is a light box that I'm working on to hang up on the wall behind me. And while this video is not going to go over the process of actually creating this light box, that is something that I am working on doing. So if you are interested in seeing how you create a light box from an SVG, leave me a comment down below. Without further ado, let's jump into the computer and see how it's done. Okay, so we're going to use Orca Slicer for this, and I've already got my model file loaded into the slicer. So it's just going to be my 3D printed light box, obviously. The first thing that we need to do is click on the edit icon up under the printer tab next to your Wi-Fi icon. And under machine G code, you'll probably start off here, and yours may even look like this, depending on if you use advanced controls or not. If this is looking like this, you're going to need to turn advanced on and go to machine G code. And then we can scroll down to our change filament G code. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can set up the M600 macro inside of the clipper backend, but this to me is going to be your simplest route without you having to go in and mess with some of the configuration files. If you're interested in seeing how to do the actual M600 configuration command, leave me a comment down below. But for the purpose of today's video, we're going to do the easiest possible solution. You see this down here where it says pause G-code? Now, because this is just one word, theoretically, you can actually just come in and type pause. So if we remove the M600 G-code and just type pause, we can save it as a new printer. I've already done this. I've actually called it MMU for multi-material unit. But essentially that's it. Without having to go and mess around in the clipper backend, I will show you this real quick. In configuration, you could go into here, printer configuration, and mess around with all of these settings that you probably aren't familiar with and probably in your best interest not to if you're not familiar with them because this will change how the printer performs. So yeah, the easiest possible way, machine G-code and replacing the change filament G-code from M600 to pause. After that, you're probably going to only have one color unless you've already added multiple colors. And you can add as many as you'd like. I only need three colors. So I'm going to need blue for my first color and just any old yellow for my second color. And if you haven't done it already, you need to go up to the top corner here and click on color painting. It's also N on the keyboard. And then we're going to click fill, the paint bucket fill tool. If you just leave it on the default circle, you'll end up just drawing on your part. So we will click the paint bucket and fill in, in my case, both sides of the model. And we can get rid of the paint bucket there. And I'll click on my second one, change my color to yellow and fill both sides. Now what this is going to do is obviously change the color not only for this bottom layer here but also for the inside. If I had just left this in black, and I'll show you real quick, our first layer would lay down just fine. You can see it's going to start off with the black and then continue on to the blue. That'll be important later on. But then my second layer was going to completely cover up that blue with the black and then no light is going to shine through. I'll just change that back real quick. I also don't want a brim on this, so I am just going to turn no brim, and I don't want a skirt around it. And that'll just leave us with the model itself. So the next thing you're going to want to do is come over to this right-hand side and scroll all the way down to layer 1, and then on the bottom scroll all the way back until you are at 0. I already know mine's going to start off with the black, but this is what you will need to feed in first if you're printing a light box, for instance, like this, 
you'll want the first color first, and then when it prompts you to do the color change, it'll show you which order it's going to do the colors in. When it goes to the second layer, because it already has blue filament loaded into there, the machine and the slicer knows that it already has the blue filament in there, so it's not gonna have you change the filament four times just to do two colors. So it's gonna continue with our second layer with the blue, and then it will finish up with the black. And that means when you go to your third and uh, subsequent layers that it's just black. You only have two color changes to perform. That's pretty much it. You come up to your edit printer settings, machine G code, and remove the M600 command that was under the change filament G code and replace it with the pause command. And then you can send your first plate down onto the printer. Now this will complete the first black layer before transitioning over into the blue and doing both layer one and two of the blue. Once the printer is finished with that first black layer and it's ready to switch over to the blue, it'll move into the pause position and start unloading the filament automatically. So you can just press that lever down, pull in your new filament, and start feeding it into the extruder. Now you'll have to press that lever down again to get the filament started and through the extruder gears. Once you're done with that though, you can hit confirm twice on the screen and then hit continue. At that point, the machine's gonna purge a good amount of filament and this is where you really need to pay attention. There is no filament cutter on this so you need to be there to cut the filament before it moves back onto the print otherwise you're going to drag that purged filament out. But you can see here as soon as it's done it'll move into position and continue on with the next color. Now like I mentioned before this is going to do both layers of blue before prompting you to switch back to the black. The process is exactly the same once it prompts you again to switch to the other color. You'll go back through, remove the blue filament, feed the black back in, give it a little bit of a push, and then hit confirm twice, and continue. Just remember, don't walk away. You're going to need to be there to cut the filament before it starts printing again. So then I let it finish up. It'll take another two and a half, three hours for this print to complete, and then I have yellow to do. The process is exactly the same for the yellow as it was for the blue. In my case, we're gonna start off with the black. It'll do two layers of yellow afterwards, and then it will move back to black to complete its print. Just remember not to walk away until the filament is done purging and you've had a chance to grab it off of the end of the nozzle. Now one thing that the Neptune seems to do is move to a place that it's not starting at. So you may end up with some areas where your previous color mixes with the following color. And in the case of the yellow, it becomes a little bit more evident where the black and the yellow mix together. Even if we did have a purge tower, that wouldn't fix the issue. All in all, this process only takes about 10 to 15 seconds once the machine tells you it's time to replace the material with the next color. And then we have our finished results, at least for the light box covers. I still have to print the backs out, but that's not multi-material, so I'm guessing you don't really care about that. So once we're finished, we've got both colors here, and I wanted to quickly point out what I was talking about before, where the colors seem to mix together. So in the case of the blue, you don't really notice it. The only thing on the blue that I really notice is right here under that line of black, where it originally moved to, it kind of sat there for half a second, if that, causing some of the filament to blob up. And you can kind of see a little line around the bottom of it that's not super noticeable from far away, but if you're looking at it up close, it's something you're definitely gonna notice. Now, in this print in particular, I ended up getting an area of under extrusion, I guess I'll call it, or maybe the bed just wasn't perfectly flat or level, where up here, it didn't really connect all the way, and when I went to pull it off of the bed, it actually pulled through and ripped the blue layer off from the black layer. I also noticed some under extrusion in this area here, so that leads me to believe the bed just wasn't as flat on that particular corner as it was across the rest of the bed. Now, taking a look at the yellow print in particular, I did mention before how it sort of moves to one position and then will move to another position and actually continue the printing. It seems to have started right here with the black, even though there was no reason for it to move to this position with the black because no black is being laid down on top of the yellow. For whatever reason, when it continued on, it moved to that position, sat there for a fraction of a second, but just enough to leave a little bit of black filament coming through in the yellow. And then it continued on with the print. 
I'm sure there's something in the slicer itself that can be changed to prevent that, but it is something that I noticed and it happened both on the yellow print and on the blue print. And that might also explain why we've got this little blob there. It seems like there's maybe a specified position within the slicer itself somewhere that when it moves from the pause point and continues on with the print, it gets itself close to the bed and then it will continue on with the rest of the print. That's unfortunate in our case because, well, then we end up with black in our yellow and that doesn't look the greatest. So that is something to keep in mind. I didn't play around with the settings too much to figure out if there was a fix for that. So if any of you have a fix for that, let me know that down in the comments below because it won't help just me, but it'll also help anybody else who's using this video to do multicolor prints. Now let's talk about a question that I got in my previous video where we did multicolor printing on a single unit A1 Mini. A few people asked in the comments if this was something you could do to get like a multicolor dragon or a multicolor keychain. And yes, you technically could sit there and babysit the printer for each layer. That's really up to you. Personally, I wouldn't sit there and wait for each color change to happen, especially not on something that might have two or 300 different color changes, you will be there babysitting your printer all night long. If you wanted to do something like three colors, maybe you had more than one design in your print that required three or even four plus colors, this would be the same process. You'll just add more colors in the filament window and you'll just have to be there to pull the old filament out and know which order the machine is gonna print them in. And again, you can go down in the slicer, scroll all the way down on the layer window and then scroll all the way back and just watch as it moves through the print. In this case, it did a single layer of the black and then it moved on to the yellow, did the first and second layer of yellow and then had a switch back to the black so it could do the second layer and then continue the printing from there. If your design had say three layers of yellow instead of two like mine does, it's again, the same process. You're just gonna be there babysitting it for an extra layer. So that's it. It's a pretty simple process. The Elegoo Neptune 4 series actually makes it pretty simple to do. Should work the same on the Neptune 4 Pro, the Neptune 4 Plus, as well as the Neptune 4 Max. And my guess, although I don't have one here, is this process would work the same on the Neptune 3 series of printers as well although the user interface on the screen might be slightly different. The process of waiting for the print to finish with one color, pausing, and then moving on to the next should be fairly similar. That's about all there is to it. I hope this was able to help some of you who were wondering how to do multicolor printing on your Neptune 4 series of 3D printers. If you learned something, give the video a thumbs up, and if you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments below, and maybe members of the community will be able to help you out, and I'll do my best to chime in where I think that I'll be of use. I don't use this printer very often for multicolor printing, but I have it here. So I'm always willing to test stuff out and do another video on it if I think it's going to be of value. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you guys learned something here and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.